What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Shardog.com. My name is Sean Sheehan, and we are back for another preview of one championship. One championship on Prime Video 19. Haggerty versus Lobo goes down on February 16th over in the Lumpany Boxing Stadium in Bangkok, Thailand. You can watch this card if you're in the US or Canada on, uh, on Amazon Prime, it's included with your, uh, with your Prime package. Or if you are like me in Ireland or in, across the water there in the UK, you can watch this card on, uh, on Sky Sports, which is absolutely fantastic. We spoke about that, I think, uh, during the last one. But uh, it's, uh, it's so easy now to, to watch uh, one championship and uh, such a great uh, thing for them. For, for me, and I know a lot of people on my side of the, the world are delighted because uh, we've, look... We've wanted MMA on the big channel, the big Sky Sports channel for a long time. And uh, one championship, we're able to deliver that. So that's absolutely uh, fantastic. And uh, they have delivered uh, a pretty good card here as well. Um, the one thing I would say about this card, all the other cards I've covered this year, I think there's been... There's been uh, there's only been two cards and maybe three cards this year, but I, I've been looking ahead to the big one six uh, one six six card as well, which is arguably the best card one I've ever put on. And... There's a lot of MMA fights in all of them. This one, not not as much. There's only, I think, only three MMA fights. Uh, and this card, I must look at my notes as we go through. But this is a, uh, you know, a lot of big kickboxing. We, I'll talk uh, and Muay Thai. And I'll talk about um, I'll talk about some of the Muay Thai fights here, some of the MMA fights as well. Uh, but uh, we'll uh, we will look forward to it. We'll get into it here now uh, in a second. I think with one championship as well, it is. Um, you know, it is a big opportunity over the next while with that massive card coming up to, you know basically you know get people in get people who are you know and, and there hasn't been any uh pfl bellator yet there hasn't been any cage warriors yet one championship or the one filling that void of the you know the chasing pack at the moment and uh this is a i think this is a big time for him to continue to do that you know there's going to be less cards this year there's only eight bellator cards this year there's only uh there's no um uh, PFL Challenger Series this year so uh, we have cut down a lot of the Chasing Back MMA cards this year and uh, you know one championship absolutely could be there to fill that void and I think they're being smart with it as well with some of their dates but let's get into this card no more uh, no more messing about let's get straight into it um, and the main event obviously I'm going to concentrate mostly on the MMA fights but I went back and I watched some of the uh, uh, the, the Muay Thai um, standouts here as well and some of the fights and I think the the main event between uh, Jonathan Haggerty and Philippe Lobo is a very very interesting one. Um, you look at Jonathan Haggerty; he's probably, I would say, he's probably the MMA fighter I've watched the most of ever, considering like he's been a mainstay uh, on one championship for you know for a good while over the last kind of two to three years. Um, he's very light on his feet. He loves those teeps and the one to, the one twos down the middle. I think. Um, I think he, you know, it, obviously it's easier in, in Muay Thai. You don't have uh, the, the takedowns and, and the clinch and ever the, the prolonged clinch anyway uh, to deal with like you have in, in mixed martial arts. But the way he throws one-twos is like the way... I was watching Roman the Lidze, the la, you know, last week or two weeks ago, whenever it was. And you're just thinking, give us a couple of one-twos, you know? Give, give us something to get your opponent thinking about. And it, it's almost... You know, it's it's almost the simplest art in fighting, but it's <laughs> it's a very tough one to master. You know, I, I listened to, I think maybe Joe Rogan or someone talking about the the ability to throw a jab, and how long it actually takes you to throw like a really beautiful, crisp, you know, Floyd Mayweather or a Manny Pacquiao or you know Tyson Fury jab or whatever it might be. Um, it's it's absolutely not that easy, but at the same time, you think. There would be a little bit more of an MMA using long, uh, you know, one, two strikes down the middle. We saw obviously a lot of it from the likes of McGregor back in the day. Junior Rosantis is always a guy I give, uh, I give props on that as well. I, I feel like his striking is some of maybe the most underrated or the most undervalued that we've had in, in MMA in a long time. But uh, look, watching MMA, uh, watching Muay Thai guys can definitely uh, give you a few ideas for MMA guys. But as I said, easier said than done. But Haggerty, very varied. Just so comfortable. You see, like you see a lot of, you know, again, I, I'll bring it back to MMA. You see a lot of guys who go into fights, you know, we saw, look, here's an, was it Chris Weidman? 
he had nine, ten MMA fights when he fought Anderson Silva. Like, there's only a certain level of comfort you can actually have. But some of these, you know, my Thai guys have 60, 70, 200, 500 <laughs> fights behind them and they're as ultra comfortable as you possibly can be. And Haggerty is one of those guys. He looks very, very comfortable landing, uh, body shots, uh, uh, land to the head with different shots as well. The variation, again, I'll say it is just absolutely fantastic. And his jab is just amazing. Absolutely uh, amazing. Lobe on the other side of it, then, I think he's more of a, a kind of a rhythmic fighter, uh, quick with his combinations. Um, uh, 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 he, he, in, in my time, you don't see it as often, but he does a lot of hand fighting, like in the in the clinch, in the pocket type of hand fighting, which is more uh, of an MMA thing, I would say. We saw a, a lot of it in, um, you know, in kind of the, what era would it be, the, the Johnny Hendricks, Robbie Lawler type of era. We don't see as much of it these days, but I think he is really, really, really good at that. And, like, that could be the win and lose in the fight. If Haggerty kind of gets drawn into that uh, inside pocket battle, It'll be maybe Lobo's fight. He's very technical in that area, very technical in every area. But if Haggerty can keep it loose, keep it wide, keep it long, I think he will have the uh, the advantage there. But a very very interesting uh, bout, and I'm sure one that uh, a lot of people will be uh, will be tuning into with, with bated breath. Um, in the comment event, there's another bantamweight Muay Thai uh, bout between uh, Simapet and uh, Mohammed Yunus. Um, they actually uh, fought uh, recently, uh, and Eunice knocked him out. There's a clip of it uh, on YouTube. I don't know there's a whole fight up anywhere, but I, I saw it, and uh, it, obviously Simipet went in. With, there's a big favorite. He's fought a lot recently as well uh, in one championship and, and elsewhere. Um, and, I, I, you know, maybe they're trying to set the wrong of, of that fight coming in here, but, you know, he's Eunice is big and tall and very good on the outside. He has massive power as he showed on that. He doesn't maybe look as you know. You talk about the the other three lads here. We're talking about in the in the top two in the in the top two fights. Maybe he doesn't look as uh, technical as them, but by God, is he every bit as scary, if not more scary than all of them with the power he has, and again that level of comfort. But Simiped, you know, the southpaw, he always looks for that one shot. He's the type of guy. Isn't he? He's kind of. I always use the, the, the phrase, slow until he's fast. He waits and waits and waits and waits and pops in. Um, and a guy, again, I've, I've used the word confident many times here now, I'm comfortable. He's very confident in his ability to land that one big shot. And that's dangerous when you go in there against a guy like Mohamed Yunus, who is so powerful. Um, but Simapet himself is is so good that maybe he can afford to do it as well. So, look, you watch that, um, you watch that fight. You think about this fight, and someone's going to get knocked out again. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I, I'll give you my picks. I go, I, I, I'll go with Simapet this one. I'll go and make it one one. I'll go with Haggerty to win on the uh, in the main event. Um, okay, first uh, or the top MMA bout of the night is uh, Daniel Williams versus Lito Adewang. Uh, in a in a again a very very interesting one here. I'm a big fan of uh, of both of these guys really the way they fight. But Daniel Williams is funny. He's only eight MMA fights, but he's a lot of of stand up as well. I think he's I'm just looking here actually on on Chardock, 24 and nine in in kickboxing slash Muay Thai. Um, so a lot a lot of experience there. You know he's fought a lot of good guys like he fought Jeremy Miado last time out. It's, it's 2022 since he last fought in MMA, which is a, t- a tad surprising. It, it felt like I, I previewed one of his cards, one of his fights not too long ago, but it was probably an MMA fight. I would say. Um, but yeah, it's good to see him coming back in here against Lito Adewang, who was um, you know also in there with Jeremy Miado last time out. He won that fight. He lost uh, the fight that they had with, with, he had with Jeremy Miado before. We all know about that. The knee injury. T- I spoke about that the last time. But he's on a two fight win streak now here, and it's very interesting to see if he can go on and maybe get into um, uh, get into contention there in that uh, uh, in that uh, flyweight division. In, uh, in in one time, our strawweight division, as, as they call it, um, Williams obviously we know is a great kickboxer. His hands just never stop. Uh, I, I think people probably remember that Rod Tang Rock'em Sock'em Robots uh, fight that he had, where like there was body kicks just going in all over the place. His body kicks are so good. Um, one thing. I would say transitioning over into MMA, watching some of his MMA fights. Look, if you're a, a highly vaunted kickboxer like he is, you're going to get 
wrestlers against you, you're going to get taken down. But I, I would say he's very good at getting back up from taking down, something which isn't usually the case with guys who have uh, a long kickboxing background. Now he has an, a, a good MMA background as well, so you know, obviously we shouldn't be too shocked maybe, but... Um, Again, lovely jabs. I think he jabs to the body very well, but then comes up top uh, as well. Um, he very, he does vary his um, his techniques between fights as well. Uh, we've seen him in in some fights where he throws a lot of high kicks, a lot of kicks in general. Uh, but I think in recent fights. Uh, and even before the, the, the Miata fight, I think there was a lot of calf kicks, something, you know, which obviously is, is becoming more and more prevalent in MMA all the time. But when you throw calf kicks uh, rather than high kicks, there's less of a chance of getting taken down, less of a chance of the kick being caught. And that's exactly what he wants, you know. Um, but I think he's learned from maybe his early days of fighting in MMA that, you know, you can't go in there and fight a Muay Thai fight. You have to fight uh, an MMA fight and you have to fight... Um, uh, you know, if if you want to strike, maybe it's more about the boxing than it is about the all round boxing and kicking. But as I said, the, that problem is kind of solved with the low calf kicks more than anything else. But he's definitely become more of a a boxing MMA fighter than a Muay Thai, you know, eight limbs uh, MMA fighter over the last while. And I think that I think that's a good thing to be honest. Um, Adamang then very bouncy, very fast combination uh, striker. You know he wears those uh, those red shorts of uh, of Team Lakai, and you know when when someone does that, you know what type of fighter they're going to be. They're going to be throwing those you know those spinning kicks to the, <laughs> the uh, to the midsection. They're going to be throwing those leg kicks. They're going to be throwing hard. They're going to have good cardio, and they're going to you know keep going. And they're going to be well rounded as well. So I wonder will Adi Wang maybe throw in a um, a takedown here? You know. He's five, uh, sorry, four submission wins in his 15. So, he, you know, he's no mug on the ground whatsoever. Uh, he's been submitted a couple of times himself as well. But, you know, one of them was to Jar Brooks, who's one of the best ground se- specialists in the world, the best ground specialist in the world at that weight. There's no doubt about it. And it was 10 years before that, before he was uh, submitted as well. So uh, I think the ground advantage will definitely be there for him, uh, whether he takes it there and tries to utilize that or not. I suppose that's another question, but I would have to favor, uh, I'd have to favor Lito Adewang in this one. I just think a little bit more well-rounded, uh, and that's how he's going to get through this for um, for me. Um, just on a uh, last thing, maybe on Adewang as well. Um, I think between the first and second Miado fights, there was there was a lot of, um, of a lot of leg kicks for him in both fights and maybe that's something he if the fight does turn into a, a stand-up fight that he will be able to utilize very good counter striker as well and you know Miado took him down in one of those fights and I think he'll you know he got up from that got a takedown of himself and I think that kind of shows that in these big fights in a big opportunity he's willing to kind of take the fight to the ground and go to the ground and I think that will be the case as I said again here and I, that's why I would favor him um all right, let's move on. Lightweight Muay Thai next. Uh, Liam Nolan versus Nozet Truillo. Um, Nolan, with his, you know, back, watching back some of fights, he just does knees. Those knees are so good. Big and strong for the division as well. Such lovely combinations. His right hand is so accurate. Lovely high kick as well. Um, Truillo then, maybe not as big, but very strong. Like, extremely strong when he gets into the clinch. Unbelievable, good in-fighter. He fought Rungnari. Um, and the biggest issue against Rungnari was the problem from the distance, I think. So if you're Nolan, uh, I, I think that's what you do. You know, keep those combos going. Fight from distance. Land that accurate right hand. Land that head kick. Um, if you're Trujillo, try to use that strength. I know I said Nolan is very strong. You know, I don't think he's as strong as Trujillo. He's probably taller than him, maybe, you know, lengthier than him. But I don't know if he's as strong as him. And sometimes, you know, you just have to make it, you have to make it a little bit dirty in there if you're a guy, you know, in there against a guy like Liam Nolan who is is very good and very technical. Um, and I I, like that. I think that'll be the winning and losing as well. I think if Trujillo can cause him problems in that area, especially maybe, you know, into the second and third, it could, could work out for him. But I, I think... Do you know what? In this card, I'm going to back all the technical fighters, and I'm going to I'm going to go for Liam Nolan to win this. I just do think as well when you sometimes when you do rush in a little bit. Look, we see it a lot in MMA. You know, guys going for data and they get caught with a knee. When you do come in and you do kind of trying to get lower, get to the body in terms of clinching or in terms of uh, even attacking the body with punches, 
there is uh, I suppose an opening at times for those big knees to be landed and I think if uh, Nolan smells that opening uh, he'll, eat, he'll eat you up so I'm going to go for Nolan in that one um, then we have a welterweight MMA bout between uh, Tetsu- uh, uh, Hiroyuki Tetsuya and Vladimir De Silva Barbosa um, two guys who do you know what they're kind of they, if you were to see a silhouette of them, you'd be like, this is the exact same guy. They are both beasts. Uh, five, five foot six and five foot eight. There's a little bit of, of a height advantage for uh, for the Silva, you know, who he lost Easy Fekateu last time out. And I think that was a little bit of a surprise to, to people. He'd been in there with Kadasam a couple of fights before that, you know, lost both of those fights. But in between that, he's won five uh, of those last seven, you know, only won once in one championship, and by God, will he want to, to turn that around and, and change that uh, to two yet in? And on the other hand, you know, he's won his last three in a row uh, in one championship after losing to Murzad Ramazanov, who has, you know, been one of the best one championship fighters over the last four or five years uh, in his uh, in his debut. Um, you know, 12 and 4 now with, with eight knockouts uh, in there as well. Um, you you look at both of them, and I think you start off with Tatsuya. The I think his nickname uh, is the, uh, the I'm looking here it says the Japanese beast, but someone in commentary called him the Japanese juggernaut, and he has a very very good nickname. He's a powerful wrestler, throws that that big overhand leaping left hook type, type of thing. Although without the leaping part, <laughs> you know, it's kind of just that swinging left hook. I would say very good leg kicks. Uh, and when he gets to the ground, he's one of these guys. There's a couple of guys in this actually in, in the next MMA fight as well, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Where, you know, sometimes guys, they you you look at him on the feet and they're okay. He's he's doing his game plan. He's throwing what he's throwing. Then the fight goes to the ground and it's like a different fighter, just comfortable, looks more athletic, looks quicker, looks slicker. And he's one of these guys. When the fight gets to the ground. He just looks so much better. His ground and pound is, is immense, very, very good. And uh, he's a lot of uh, a lot of stoppages, and we'll get a lot of stoppages there in the future as well. Um, uh, Valmir de Silva, Barbosa then, very, as I said, similar shape. Um, I would say he's better on the, um, on the feet uh, and maybe not as good on the ground. But still... Uh, I think he does wrestle a lot. A lot of his fights, because of you know the the, the size and strength of him, they end up in the clinch, uh, and he usually wins that in terms of strength. Who's going to be the stronger here? I I actually have no idea. They both look like strength guys. Whoever can win that battle, I said this a few times now, but whoever can win that battle for the strength, whoever can win that battle in the clinch, whoever can win the takedown battle, I think will win this fight. Uh, I think if Barboza gets his fight in the feet for a long time, I think he will win. I think he's a better striker. As I said, way better leg kicks, way more technical striker. Uh, but I think if Tatsuya can get the fight to the ground, land that ground up on, land those big shots, he'd be very, very hard for uh, Barboza and his team to, to not... Um, be overwhelmed by this because there's just certain positions in in mixed martial arts you get to and there's uh there's no stopping a person like you you get to you get to the ground with habib you're you're probably getting finished or you look the end of the round is probably the best you can hope for and tatsuya is one of those guys as well he's not the type of guy you you let take you down and then you're sweeping him and getting back up even for a very strong guy like barboza i think he'll have to rely on that clinch i think he'll have to rely on a bit of circle and have to rely on getting the front foot and not let letting tatsuya um get the fight uh you know into where he wants to i think as well if Barboza can fight that, I said he's a more technical striker than he is. If he can fight that more technical striking game, you know, where you're jabbing, you're kind of fighting maybe on the inside and, and circling out a little bit, that big left hook is just not going to work from Tetsuya. Like, it's just, it just really isn't. So, uh, again, I'm picking a more technical guy here. I'm going for Valmir de Silva Barboza. Um, you know, when I watched Tetsuya, first of all, I watched him first and I'm thinking, she's going to be hard to, at this level to beat him, but. I don't know, I think Barboza might be just kind of a bad matchup for him, but having said that, if Tetsuya goes out there and shows he's a stronger and shows he's wrestling is going to be dominant, I don't think Barboza will have a chance against him. So what I'm backing this on and why I'm going for Barboza is that uh, ability to, you know, maybe even out the strength battle, maybe even out the clinch battle and get the fight fighting on the feet. Uh, or, you know, if he can fight, get the fight to the ground as well. It's not like he can't, you know, I, I think he definitely has the possibility to do that, especially if the fight goes longer. Maybe Tetsuya has tried a lot of wrestling and is getting tired. I could see that happening as well. 
Right, let's move on to the the, the next Muay Thai bout, uh, a bout, bout at Federer between uh, Luke uh, Lisi and Eddie Abasolo. I watched a good bit of Luke Lisi over the last while. I was actually supposed to interview him there a few weeks ago, but it kind of fell through. I'm sure that'll happen again in the future, and I watched a good bit of his fights. It's a very interesting story. Um, you know, he's obviously came over, uh, had his one championship debut a while back, and he's back here now again. I think the one issue for Luke Lisi is um, how he will rise and how he will meet this level you know obviously fighting Muay Thai for one championship fighting Muay Thai over in uh, over in Thailand against the best of the best it's not the same as fighting in, you know in the US um now not to say you can't reach that level or you never will but you have to I suppose prove it before you do it and he is very good you know his teeps are absolutely lovely um that's why he got what's his nickname in the chef isn't it or something like that that's why he got the uh that nickname because he he feeds guys teeps uh the whole time and he's really good at him good rhythmic fighter again uh very technical and i'm very interested to see how he gets on against here against eddie abasolo again those left hooks so good uh eddie loves to put the uh, pressure on you know and he's fought to a really high level against the guy like uh like liam nolan the one thing in this i, I just uh, I wonder how Lisi will deal with that pressure if uh, Abasola decides to fight that way. Now, you know, I'm no expert in in uh, <laughs> in Muay Thai technique or tactics or anything like that, but I, I, I just wonder, like, at that high level, with that sort of power guy in front of you who has fought, been in there with the best of the best, how a guy like Lisi will, will deal with it? Or will it take a few more fights for him to be able to rise himself to that level? Um and honestly, I'm not sure because, like, I have been very impressed with everything I've seen from Lisi. You know, he's tough as well. He's dogged. He will stay in there with guys. And, um, you know, I, um, I I like Abasolo as well. Abasolo isn't like, you know, he's the type of guy that, you know, maybe like saying to you, see a Brad Tavares or someone like that. Or or maybe I'm uh, maybe a Danny Gay or someone, you know. You, you know, you need to get over this guy to get to the very, very best guys. And if, you, if you're not good enough, you won't get over that guy because they're very good themselves. So, um, you know, I think it might be a little bit early for Lisi. I'm going to go for Abasolo on that one. But if you ask me this in maybe a year's time, I might, I might pick it differently. But um, interesting to see that one. Um, okay, there's a, a, a women's strawweight mixed fight in between uh, Wonder Girl and Diana D'Souza Cardozo. I believe this is... Every second round Muay Thai in and mixed martial arts. Uh, and you know what? I saw some people giving out about these mixed fights recently. Now, I wasn't the biggest fan uh, of the Sexy Yama uh, fight recently against Nikki Holskin, to be honest. I think the boxing round first was a bit unfair and Sexy Yama didn't have much of a chance. But this one is a little bit different, I think. I think Wonder Girl, you know, she's fast, great jab, great combos. But Cardoza's heavy hitting right hand counter is very good. Uh, you know, if, if it goes to the MMA, very good. Take down the fence. You know, okay grappling as well. You know, she's been in there with Mangbo. Uh, very good leg kicks, gets caught an awful lot <clears throat> in exchanges. And a very nice head kick. So, look, you've two good kickboxers in here. If Wonder Girl gets to the MMA round, okay, she might have a little bit of, of trouble. But she's, you know, she's the type of girl as well that she has to, you know, it's it's not it's not a, a ten second beat down. It's not a big one punch knockout usually with her. It's usually a two, three, four, five minute uh one. And then we saw Wonder Girl as well kinda of tested recently where the pace got pushed in her, where her opponent was staying in there with her, and then she struggled a little bit as well. So I wonder if Cardoso can do that. You know, push it to MMA where she's more experienced and see if that'll pay off for her. Um and I, I do you know what I think it probably will. I think I think she'll be able to stay in there till the, the MMA round. I think when it gets to the MMA round, I think if she you know, if you can last in the grappling uh, against Mang Bo, you can definitely do it against Wonder Girl. Uh, or you'll definitely have an advantage against Wonder Girl. So I'm gonna pick uh I'm gonna pick Cardozo in that one. All right, the last two bouts here. Um Strong in MMA between Mansour Malchevich and uh Yuseki Sarata, um or S- Saruta even. Um, I I think look this division is obviously moving an awful lot. Jar Brooks is fighting coming up soon on that one six six card, which I uh, I believe he's on the card, isn't he? Which I which I mentioned earlier on, and you know the the only guy to uh uh to beat um uh, Mankiewicz is Pasio Joshua Pasio who is fighting Jar Brooks. So you know, uh, what is he eleven and one now? Uh, uh Mansour is. He'll be looking to bounce back here. You know, he's beaten Miado. 
uh, in his one championship debut. He was fighting over an Eagle FC for a long time and obviously won all of those uh, won all of those fights there. And look, he's gone in here against uh, Saruta, who is very experienced. He's been in there with probably the second and third best guy in that division <clears throat> in his last two fights, Passio and Gustavo Ballard. Um, he, look, he'll be looking for that fight again. Uh, whether it's you know Passio if he wins it, Passio has obviously beaten him twice, but he, like he has wins over Alex Silva uh, and others as well. He is a good fighter in that division, but you would have to think Mansoor is a is a big big favorite uh, in this one. He's uh, I I was looking at some of my old notes and I just had a wrestler as my note for him, but I went back and watched a bit more. He dives in on the hips so well and catches that double unbelievably good, uh, and he's impossible to stop and. It's weird because these lads obviously are so small. They're, you know, the 115 pounds, 125, 100, you know, probably not much more than 130 pounds after, you know, rehydrating and being in there on fight night and everything like that. And usually, you know, what, what I've noticed in those sort of fights is it's very hard, unless you are the top of the chain wrestler like uh, Brooks, to actually like hold guys down because it's a little bit easier for them to kind of squirm their way out there fast. You do need only one inch of space and they're gone, but... Obviously, Brooks does it extremely well, and so does Mansoor. Great BJJ as well, which I think very much helps. Uh, and I went back, and I, I'd say I went about five fights of his to find some striking, and I'm not sure it exists, to be honest. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I couldn't find any. I, 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 I don't think he will be striking. If he does, I think it could be big problems for him. Um, Sarut on the other side of it, then. Look, um, Mansoor is five foot six. Um, Saruta is is five foot three, and I would be very surprised if that five foot three was accurate. He is very, very, very small. Um, he was in there with uh, with Ballard, and it didn't look like there was much of a difference there. And Ballard's only four nine, like so. Um, that's you know that that tells you a story here as well. If he can get the fight to the ground, it could be issues for for Saruta. Uh, but Saruta moves a lot at this weight as he should, maybe. Mansoor at the other side of it doesn't and that might be a bit of an advantage but he barrels in with the right hand uh, does Saruta good takedowns of his own I'm not sure they're going to be a factor here fights way on the outside and not much tins to land but it's a good style for a guy like Mansoor like Mansoor's style is I need to take you down his style is I need to not get taken down I need to stay as far away from you as I possibly can and you know that's that could turn into let's be honest it could turn into a boar fest or it could turn into someone finding their way very, very quickly in that fight and finding their way to victory. Uh, whether that is Saruta being able to stay on the outside and Mansoor just getting frustrated and not being able to catch him or Mansoor finding a way in, finding a way to take him down and then Saruta kind of wilting to that, um, I suppose, taking a part of his game plan. I think uh, that will happen. I think Mansoor will win this and I, I'll favour the wrestler in this one. And in the opening bout of the night in my time um, is uh, uh, Tong Poon, who is uh, out of uh, the, the PK Sanchai gym against Timor uh, Shikugov. Couldn't really find anything of Shikugov, to be honest. Um, but for, for Tong Poon, he's an insane inside fighter. You know, he uses all those weapons. He goes to war just nonstop. Um, looks like he's had a lot of fights, a big, stiff, kind of, <laughs> you know, one of those guys who's always been, uh, been around and seen and all. I'm looking here, he's... Uh, 73 and, and 23 uh, so it's it's uh, it's interesting to see how that will work and you know as I said I haven't seen much of, of Timor but uh, was, where did I, see? I, I, saw, I think I saw one or two clips he looks like look he looks like your your typical fast hard leg kicking powerful uh, uh, Muay Thai fighter and um you know, I'm I'm sure Tong Poon has seen plenty of that down through the years. So, uh, who's going to win that one? Uh, look, I'm not giving a pick on a guy I've I've li literally never seen fight because there's very uh, very little or no footage out there. But we we'll, yeah, we go Tong Poon, we we'll go Tong Poon. All right, everyone, I will leave it there. Thank you very much for tuning in. As I said, uh, if you want to check out this card, it is on uh, February 16th, 8 p.m. Eastern time start, um, 5 p.m. PT, and that would be what 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1 a.m. For uh, us here in uh, the, uh, the the Irish slash British Isles, um, uh, one championship is on in Prime in America and Canada and over here on Sky Sports. So check it out there. All right, everyone, I will leave it there. My name is Sean Sheehan for SharDog.com, and I'll see you all next time. <laughs>